Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition where we're here to offer you insights and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So are you in the mood for a civilization game? One in which you're going to explore new places, discover new technologies, learn new science and perhaps even conquer new zones? Well if so, then here's five things I think you need to know about Tapestry. Tapestry is a game about taking your people from small beginnings and guiding them to a prosperous future. Each player starts with a unique civilization, which they must guide through five ages. On your turn, you'll be paying resources to advance science, technology, exploration or military all of which help you to grow and enhance your capital city scoring and income happen when you move from one age to the next and you implement a tapestry card to advance your civilization the winner is the person with the most points after five eras Thing one, what's this game all about? Well, Tapestry calls itself a civilization game, meaning we're kind of anticipating getting a rudimentary peoples that we're going to develop and enhance through the ages till they get to some sort of kind of level of technology similar to ourselves or perhaps even beyond. And the problem with this idea, of course, is that it's not particularly thematic. It's definitely much more activity based and Tapestry embraces this wholly. Like the world that you're building your civilization in is very nondescript. And even though the civilizations you get are unique and they all have their special abilities, they don't really feel like sites of creativity or interest, but rather they just feel like a means to bend the rules. Um, and not only that, there's something strange here about the fact that you have very little control over how your civilization develops, which is one of the main features and fun parts of playing a civilization game in the first place. You play your tapestry cards to see which way your civilization might go in each era, but you've very little say over what they are, what they do, or how relevant they are to what you've been doing as a whole. And these civilizations, I found them particularly hard to get behind. They didn't feel like a people I cared about or that I was interested in. Like overall, theme wise, I think it's pretty thin here. Um, now, similar games to Tapestry. I think that's kind of tough because in my mind, Tapestry feels like a mix up of a variety of different games. Um, so I'll have to give it that it's definitely a little bit on the unique side. Thing two, mechanics. Well, Tapestry is definitely steeped in resource management. Um, as the aim of the game, in a sense, is to move up these various tracks, which represent enhancements for your civilization. So these are things like science, technology, military, and exploration. And you pay with your resources to go up a space on each of these tracks, and you'll get a reward for doing so, which will enhance your own civilization. You see what I mean? So you're balancing what's worth paying for to what you'll get out of it now and later. Um, and so the game comes down to deciding which track you want to go up when, and which bonus you'd like like to receive when as well. Um, I found that despite the tracks naming all of the kind of the sciences and technologies you were learning as you went up them, they were really just places to go to get stuff. Um, it didn't feel particularly thematic. Um, but also note that you are not the only civilization going up these tracks at any one time. Other people can be there too. And there are landmarks for hitting certain goals first. Um, and this is the case in a number of things in the game. And if you are first to reach a landmark, let's say on one of the tracks, you're going to get a very shiny building. Um, and this is going to go on your, um, your home city kind of board capital city board and I'll talk about that in a little bit of a minute but you definitely want to be the one getting those um you can get all the way to the end of the track as well and there are big bonuses there but the problem is you only kind of get to do it once and then you're pretty much finished with your track um and I found it a little bit anticlimactic to be honest because it's quite a lot of effort to get all the way to the end but um I guess I guess that's how it is um, okay, so let's go back to this whole part where we have a capital city um, and this is kind of related to your income phase because um, your player board, which is very beautiful might I add, um, starts out with a bunch of buildings upon it and 
on certain points on the track you can remove these buildings place them into your capital city and it will reveal extra resources or extra bonuses for when you score and scoring happens four times during the game and it's the time when you also get more income which means you can have uneven turns so for instance if you run out of goods before your friend um, you can start doing your income phase and head on to the next phase even though they have not and that's a little unusual I think and sometimes a little bit awkward as well but the idea of this score, this kind of phase where your civilization changes and you play your tapestry cards, you know, to, to get kind of a bonus or something interesting to happen to your civilization for this era, um, are really, really random and strange. Um, I think part of the fun of playing a civilization game is deciding where they go next. Um, and the tapestry cards are just random ways of saying you did a thing that has nothing to do with the stuff you've been doing up until this point. Um, so yeah, not a huge fan of that. Um, so this capital city board you get is the one you put all the beautiful buildings on that you may have seen in pictures and they don't fit correctly. Ah, um, that really, really bugged me. Um, I'm like, is this taking up this many squares or other squares? Um, it's its own mini game with polyonimals essentially that you're just filling out and you get points for um, filling out lines or, uh, or rows. Um, and it just, it feels completely abstracted and pointless compared to everything else you're doing in the game, other than it's a place for you to put those little buildings you took off your own player board. So yeah, um, on a whole, I think, I think Tapestry is such an unusual game because in my mind, it doesn't really fit together very well, but the parts really do kind of have merit, but it just doesn't feel like a whole game to me. Thing three on the table. So despite the fact I hate that Tapestry has a very large square board, which just about fits on my table, but that's before adding in all three player mats, I will admit that when it's set up, it's very beautiful and engaging and inviting looking. It, it Yeah, it looks pretty fantastic. Now, it is a table hog, there's no doubt about that. You're gonna need quite a bit of space to play this. However, it's actually pretty quick to set up. It didn't take too long. Now. It takes about two of us an hour to play this. Um, this obviously depends on, you know, how long you spend on your final turns and things like that. And the rule book that comes with this is only two pages long. Um, now, let's talk about the rule book. So how did we feel about it? Um, initially, I was kind of surprised, but you know what? I don't think we actually needed the rule book all that much. The game is kind of self-explanatory like that. If anything, we spent more time with the little booklet that comes that explains all of the symbols and what all of the cards and what all of the steps on the, the different tracks mean. Um, so maybe that's just a substitute from one rule book to another. Um, I don't know, but I think you can definitely get started playing fairly handily with this game. Now, replayability. Oh, this is this is tough because in my mind this game is a very static game. They're the same tracks every time you play, um, same kind of outcomes. But you do get those different civilizations. But I just don't feel like they're varied enough or interesting enough to kind of alter your gameplay really all that much in the first place. They feel a little bit more like, you know, bonuses you might want to achieve while you play. So while there are choices to be made while you're playing here, I just don't feel like they're varied enough or interesting enough to count as replayability. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, unsurprisingly, this game is gorgeous. It's very nicely produced and a lot of thought and nice things have been put into it. And would we expect anything less from Stonemaier Games? Of course not. Um, if you want to have a close-up look at some of the components, I have an unboxing video just for that. Um, but overall, this game is just, it's just lovely. Like there are beautiful buildings, there are some very nicely coated player boards, the game board itself is beautiful. You know, it really does have a lot going for it. My main issue actually is that there's a little bit of finesse lacking with things like the landmark um, buildings that go in your capital city. They don't have a definitive outline that matches the shape they're supposed to be. So it's very awkward to figure out where they're supposed to go or where they can fit. But not only that, your resource tokens are slightly too large for the slots they go in on your player board as well. And there's been a number of times where I have wondered whether it was in one section or another. Um, I find that kind of hard to go with. So it just, just feels a little bit sloppy to me. Now the artwork as a whole in the game is very nice. Is it connected up or does it make sense together? No, it's just like finding relics of art out in the wild. Um, and as for the box art, I'm not a particularly big fan. It doesn't seem to convey what the game is about. Um, and sure, the title Tapestry, 
I can kind of see where they were going this, where you were weaving your fates or something like that while building your civilization, I suppose. But I just don't think the box art reflects that um, or really can draw you in in that kind of way. And what's funny is though, despite all these complaints of mine and whatnot, the minute you see this game set up with all of its components, you're going to want to go and check it out. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Now, Tapestry came out over a year ago and there was a whole bunch of hype and excitement around this new Civilization game. And there was also a bunch of disappointment around this because people were claiming it wasn't the Civilization game they wanted. Um, and I've waited a year to look at this title and that's entirely on purpose because I didn't want my thoughts on it to be clouded by everyone else's ideas or upsets about it. Um, to be honest, I couldn't care less if this is a civilization game or not. I just want to know if it's fun or if it's worth playing. Um, so here are my thoughts on Tapestry. And surprisingly enough, my first thought is that this civilization idea matters. And not because I was expecting it to be some big grand game about growing my civilization. No, it's because the game itself sets things up that way. You're given your own civilization with which you're supposed to be expanding and growing. Um, but it's very hard to get behind these things because you're, you're just kind of going up tracks. Like, yes, I've uncovered writing, but it just doesn't make you know it's not particularly fun and it's not exciting for you to do that because you do that all the time anyway that's how the the tracks and the linear nature of this game go and you have very little control over your civilization to begin with you know you might get to choose them at the start of the game but then when you play your tapestry cards which are supposed to represent your civilization and the cool things they're doing they're also completely random um and there are the tech cards you can get so you can you know get technologies but they're completely out of order you can have a transistor radio before you learn how to write um and i think that bothers people because it upsets this idea of progression which is what the game is offering you right there are all these eras that you go through um and Every chance you have to do something meaningful with your civilization is taken away from you and just told to be random instead. And so I can see why people were, were disappointed with that feeling about it. My other issue is just how linear the game is. Like, I get it, this is a resource management thing and you're going in a particular line, but there are so few real choices to be made while you're playing, none of which affect your civilization at all. Um, and it's just, ugh. <laughs> it's, it's hard because I really, really wanted to like this, I think is the best phrase. The capital city building portion feels really like it's add-on and it was just an excuse to use all those adorable buildings in the game in the first place. Um, it doesn't really connect in with anything else particularly well um, and it just felt like a mini game inside of the game. I don't know, um, while it's adorable and cute, I just, I f it felt really, really pointless. So despite my plays of Tapestry rarely being satisfying or exciting, um, that doesn't mean that I don't think that there isn't something here, there isn't something worthwhile playing. Um, because despite the fact I'm sitting here with my reviewer's hat on picking things apart piece by piece, I did play a number of games of this and would I say I hated the game? No. And would I play it again? I would. If somebody asked me right now to play Tapestry, I would totally do it. And I think there is something to this game that I can't quite put my finger on that makes it rather charming. Um, I guess it's got these beautiful miniatures, it's got some lovely components, it's kind of easy on the eye, easy on the mind. Um, I think for me what's really here is a whole bunch of unrealized potential because I think this game really could mean something very great. Do I think you should have tapestry in your collection? Well I'm approaching this question today in the format of who do I think tapestry is for and the honest answer is I'm really not sure because there are so many different pieces to this game it seems to draw from all sorts of things that it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it's trying to do sometimes. However, my advice to you is, if you like the sound of Tapestry, I think it's well worth trying out. You might be in for a surprise. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Please go and like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos. Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Tapestry, why not shout them off in the comment box below. Um, do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me, let me hear. And until next time, tune in again for some more short and informative board game reviews.